What's up guys, this is Kashmir, and today I would like to show you my song House of Cards with Sydney Tipton and explain how I did some of the important elements. Let's take a look at the vocal. Go on, show me your ace of spades, I'll let you win again. Here it is without any effects or processing. Go on, show me your ace of spades, I'll let you win again. Just to fall, oh, oh, oh. That was actually recorded at my house in my closet, but with a little bit of studio magic, it sounds like this. Go on, show me your ace of spades. I'll let you win again. Just to fall. Now, for the next section, her pre chorus, I actually processed the vocal a little bit differently. Here it is without any effects. I act so bulletproof, but you take me down. You take me down. And here it is after. The Manly Vokes box is especially cool because it offers you de-essing, compression, and EQ all in one plugin. Next, we have the piano that is under Sydney's vocals, and for this, I use the Giant from Contact. You'll notice I add a little ping pong delay to the piano to give it some rhythm, and I'm using this Vitamin plugin from Waves, which helps shape the tone. No dice, this is real life we live And I choose to fake it now and then But I'm not alright Next we have Sydney's backup vocals Some of these are in unison, meaning they're doing the same notes as Sydney's lead And some of them are harmonies, meaning they're doing different notes Sort of creating a chord with her lead vocal There are about 15 or 20 of these So in order to save CPU, I actually put the compressors and EQs on the tracks And then I print them or freeze them in order to save CPU. If you notice, they're all panned to the left and to the right. Uh, a really important function of backup vocals is to expand the stereo image. Panning them gets them out of the way of her lead vocal, and it makes everything feel so much bigger, because whereas the lead was just in the center, now you're attacking the left and the right. Now, one of the more novel tricks that I used on the song was to actually put a delay on the kick. It's not something that I do a lot, but it worked to fill up the space here. Take a listen. I act so but you take me down. Okay, now this next section is where the disco feel comes out, and we introduce a lot of orchestral elements, which is something I love to do. So here we have all of the stabs. And next we have these runs being done by the strings. And all together sounds like this. Next, we have the lead guitar from the drop and the build up. This section is actually the combination of three guitars, and I'll take you through each one. The first is our lead. I use the Renegade patch for contact. You see here, I do a lot of little ghost notes in the MIDI to try to recreate uh, the rhythm of a real guitarist. Here you can see muted are the notes from the chords to help guide me when I was writing the melody. And on the bottom, these notes you don't hear, but they're key switches for the contact instrument. And when I press those, while I'm pressing one of the notes of the melody, it'll change the articulation. For instance, making the guitar slide up into a note like I did here. And for the processing to really make it sound authentic, I use Waves GTR, which emulates those little uh, stomp effects boxes that guitarists have, as well as their amp. And halfway through the build, I wanted to give the lead some support, so I introduced this second guitar. It has different effects and is played at a lower octave. Finally, we have the stabs with a little reverse incorporated. And all together, it sounds like this. base I use this Spire patch that I believe is on the first menu when you open Spire, it's called Oxygen, and to give it some grit I've added this Culture Vulture, it's a distortion plugin from UAD, so you can see when I turn up the drive, it gives it more bite. And next we have the VSM3, this also comes from UAD, it's another distortion saturation plugin. Interestingly it has this mixer knob which lets you blend between two different settings. <laughs> favorite 
sounds is the sound of muted guitar. In this case, I'm using two contact instruments, Renegade and Evolution Strawberry. And these are what make this song groove. And all together, sounds like this. Okay, moving on to the second verse. It's an interesting track because I had to use different tempos to make it work. Here you see a fade dropping from 110 to 100. We get a little bit of a groovier feel, as you can hear. The chords were done with this patch from Omnisphere. And here we have some more guitar plucks. You can see I'm using the Evolution Strawberry in contact. The big difference from these plucks and the ones in the drop is this wah-wah effect. Hear it with it on. Hear it with it off. There's also a very short delay effect set to 100% wet, moving the notes slightly to the right and off the grid, giving them a more relaxed feel. I tried a lot of different drums to accomplish the natural feel that I was going for, and I landed on this big stack of claps and an acoustic snare, which has reverb with the gate on it, which gives it sort of a vintage effect. And finally, to keep things natural for this section, I used the Rickenbacker bass from Contact. Here it is all together. Your voice smothered in lies for me. I told you you were king. Just a fall. Lastly, at the end of the song, we have these strings. House of Cards was really inspired by disco, and so I thought it would be fun to incorporate the signature iconic strings that came from that era. Here you can see that I've printed them to audio to really get the timing precise. And here are the actual instruments. We've got orchestra essentials, string ensemble, Berlin strings, more Berlin strings, and these agitato legato violins from Atheo. And all together, it sounds like this. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you next time.